Hey guys, so if you have some micro lensing in your images, uh, which can happen when you image a target next to, for example, a very bright star like uh, Gamma Cassiopeia, or in my case, uh, a bright star next to the Iris Nebula, I'm going to show you, you know, one of the ways you can remove it, and uh, hopefully this will help you make your images better. Because I had some trouble with this one, it was a pain in the butt, but um, I was able to remove mine and it looked okay at the end. So let's get to it and uh, see what we can do with this file. Okay, so this is what the file looks like. This is already processed, by the way. Uh, this is the starless version of uh, my data. And we're at the end of the processing here. I'm about to just add the stars back to it and then export. Uh, but before I add the stars back, I really want to take care of this ugly uh, reflection here, which is micro lensing. So um, this is uh, what would look like if the stars were added together. And then you see, I mean, the end picture looks really ugly because this is taking the entire, uh, everyone looks at that only because it's just so overwhelming. So instead of being happy with that, I wanted to try my best to remove this artifact. And uh, it's not easy, especially if you, um, you know, your object or your artifact is around a bunch of gases. Luckily for us, in this case, um, you know, what, right behind this is just a bunch of random gases that are um, you know, interacting with each other. So it's not too bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to process all processes and clone stamp. And so of course this is a, a way that, I mean, it's very popular to use clone stamp for any artifact you have. Uh, same thing for Photoshop. You can easily remove things, but this is of course a video for beginners that don't know how to use clone stamp. So I'm just going to show you real quick and uh, on this difficult um, issue here. So I'm going to first zoom in, maybe like this, and then center it. Okay, so the goal here is to remove the everything pretty much because the star is so bright that it is already in the star mask. So the star will still be there after we add the stars back to it. So here, everything here is just reflections. So the first thing I'm going to do is hold command and cl I mean, click once on the image first. So the, the process knows this is the image you're going to work on and hold command on Mac. I'm guessing it's control on PC or something else but on Mac is command and click once somewhere to have a reference point. Now look at the size of your, of your circle. Mine is a bit too small, so I'm going to raise the radius to the max. I think the max is 250. Okay, 255 is the max. And so here uh, I will make sure that my reference point does not include any of the halo here. So if it was like here, it would be too much. It would be bad because the halo is here. So I'll be right outside of the halo like that and then i will proceed inward into the artifact so i'm going to I, I clicked once for the reference point and now i'm clicking once again and see you can still see some blue here so i'm going to click again like that so you have to be very careful because if you don't do it right it's going to look very fake so that's why i'm going to use um clone stamp around and go inward so let's try here for example and you can also hold and and draw, and that can look better. And you don't want to really include any of the, like I don't want to include that for example, because those are very simple, I mean, they're very obvious. So if you include something like that, for example, uh, it's obviously fake, right? It doesn't belong here at all. In our case, behind this star is just random gas like that, which is lucky for us. So yeah, I'm just going to continue and try my best to make it look as natural as possible. And I do hate doing this because I feel like it's kind of cheating, but sometimes you have to make some sacrifices to make a good image. So I'm just trying to find good reference points where the um, all the gases seem natural. So we have like light gas and dark gases here. So I'm going to try to make a kind of like a mix of, of the two in the most natural way possible. And of course, it's a lot of back and forth. Uh, don't expect to have a natural result on the first try. Okay, okay. Ah, see, when you find a good one, you can do it a couple times. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. And here, I just don't like the separation here, so I'm going to try something. No. Okay, I think this is looking pretty natural, right? So I think I'm going to maybe stop here. And if we unzoom, it might look a bit blurry, but it's not a big deal because it, you won't really see that once you add the stars anyway. Okay, I think this is not too bad. And now you can just add your stars using pixel math. So just do like starless plus uh, star mask. And of course here you have to hit the, the green check mark. And once that's done, the red cross. So this is the final result. And if you add your stars back into it, um, you get something like this. So uh, this is even more processed because I did some Lightroom adjustments later. But this was um, the stars added after doing clone stamps all over. And as you can see, it looks very natural. I mean, uh, this is the star right here. So it looks great. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Uh, this was a very, of course, simple tutorial. And uh, try not to use clone stamp too often. It's only if you don't have a choice. But in our case, I mean, between this and that, I mean, obviously, it's worth using in this case. So yeah, have fun with your processing, and I will see you next time, and class guys. guys.